When I say that drawing from the drop is a bad idea, this is exactly why I say that. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Duncanville, Texas. Filster is one of my trusted holster makers with great offerings like the floodlight and trauma medical equipment to keep you and your loved ones safe. They're one of the few companies that I trust to make a quality product at a good price and I thank them for sponsoring today's video. Guy in the passenger seat has just gone to the bank, cashed his check, gotten 120 bucks in cash and then gotten back in his brother's truck. He's a CCW holder, but these guys have followed him home from the bank in that charger. We have audio on several angles of what happens from here. Let's listen in. Don't move, homeboy. Don't move. Don't move, homeboy. Where that money is? Don't move. Don't move, homeboy. Don't move. Don't move, homeboy. Where that money is? Don't move. Our guy here was shot in the back twice. Two of that guy's shots hit him both in the back, ended up taking out a piece of his liver and his lung in this one. He lays there for two minutes, two full minutes all by himself, just grunting and groaning. You can go watch the originals, I've linked it in the description. Finally, his family starts showing up. A neighbor is going to show up with a trauma medical kit right here, and he is going to render first aid until the police finally arrive. He spent a lot of time in the ICU. There's actually a GoFundMe for him, and this guy, man, he could use some help getting back on his feet. So if you hit the link in the description, you wanna participate in his GoFundMe, God bless you for that. Uh, the police have arrested the guy that is the they think was the driver. They are still looking. They've identified one of the guys who is the um, the get not the getaway driver, but one of the shooters. They haven't identified the other one. The one that they've identified is still loose in the community, though. And again, thankfully, our guy here, our victim, looks like he's going to make a recovery. Hey, you know, one of the best ways you can support active self-protection is by turning the notification bell on. We literally post a video here every single day of the week and that way you won't miss one. So turn that notification bell on, would you? If you go read the news stories that I've linked in the description, you will see that, that these guys followed him from the bank and the surveillance video shows one of these guys watching him in the bank that he was in when he cashed his check and got some cash out. Hey man, these follow home bank robberies uh, you know, are getting more and more common and common around the country. And so listen, if you gotta go use the bank, pay attention to what's going on in your world, specifically and especially, I want you to pay attention to who's following you when you drive off from there. So you know, they jump in their car and follow you home and rob you there. O okay, well guess what? You can pay attention to who is following you and if they are and if something is suspicious, call the cops and don't go home. For gracious sakes, drive to the police station. They'll probably drive off, pick somebody else but paying attention is absolutely king here, okay? And, and if you, you're paying attention, these follow home bank robberies, they are less apt to happen to you. I'm not gonna say not apt, 
So I think this guy having his gun on him is great. Paying attention, also incredible. You're gonna see here a little later in the lessons that when he looks over at these guys, they think that he sees them and they start backing up, but then he's gonna turn around and not you know, do anything about that, even though he's a concealed carrier. So paying attention is king and not just looking around, but actively seeing, hey, wait a minute, if this guy followed me home and then turned down the street, what's going on with them? And as I'm getting out of my car, I start to see these guys, you know, uh, jumping out of the car. Now I know I got problems and I'm going to do something about that, but he doesn't see it. He glances, but doesn't see. He hears something though, and then grabs his gun. But his first time that he really thinks about it here, he starts walking off and he gets shot in the back twice, friends. Well, well, listen, I don't know what he was doing here. I don't know why this draw of the gun and putting it up near his head and then, I, I don't know if he was going to, to you know, duck around the, the pickup truck bed or something like that, but it was just too slow and it wasn't a good idea and he gets shot twice in the back. Now I'm gonna say, man, you better stay in the fight at that point. Okay, you're shot twice, but if you still got consciousness, you better do something about it. Thankfully he does and actually gets a shot off towards them as well. And that shot off towards them sends them driving away. And that is a good thing. So we got enough. Now you're going to see here again, he draws his pistol and kind of like shows it to him. I, I, this is just, I, I don't even know what to say about it, friends. It's really bad technique, right? Like, what is he doing here? He has an opportunity to, you know, put his hands up or do a surreptitious draw. Looks like he was carrying up front, like, you know, forward of the hips, what we call appendix carry. And so, okay, fine, because his back is turned, he has a chance to do a surreptitious draw, duck around that truck, something like that, do something about it. But, but the reality is this is drawing from the drop. And when you show the guy, okay, well, I got a gun too, he gets a shot off first and those shots prove to be accurate. Well, guess what, man? Now he's in real trouble because the first person to put a, an anatomically significant hit on the other guy usually wins the gunfight. And that's kind of what goes down here. But again, if you notice, when he glanced over, these guys backed up. You watch here, right here. You're like, whoa, what was going on? And friend, that was his opportunity because if you had actually been paying attention here, and you know like I do, you, you know, you've looked at your watch and not seen what time it is. Like, what time is it? And then you look at your watch like, wait, I didn't actually see what time is it? Uh, and that kind of stuff happens to us all. But, but especially if you're paying attention because somebody is following you home from the bank, you got to do a better job than this. And, and I'm not blaming him for being injured here. I'm just saying we can make better choices than this and we can actually prevail in these kinds of gunfights. Now, listen, this guy is going to come over here and, and you notice he's got two hands on the gun. He's given commands. He's all these things. He's probably about 10 yards away. But one thing that I want you to recognize, we say all the time on the channel, you can't count on luck, but luck counts and it counts both ways. Because this guy drops a hand off the gun, the gun is down below his line of sight, the guy shows him a gun and he shoots him, all right? And he's got the gun down below his line of sight, one hand on the gun, probably about 10 yards away, eight to 10 yards away is my estimate here, and he gets a hit, nevertheless, just with a pure point shot. Now, now that is pure blind luck, friends. Uh, if you tried that on the range, most times you're gonna miss in any significant capacity, and and so and and this guy's under duress, but luck counts, and he gets not one hit but two in that particular case, and so therefore, gosh, man, this thing goes. But he does drive him off, and so okay, we'd call that okay. He he did his thing, except for he is now badly, almost mortally injured. Right? He spent a lot of time in ICU and probably didn't die simply because most modern trauma centers are like Hogwarts in lab coats, as Dr. William April used to say. And so, hey, wait a minute. Now recognize, two minutes before anybody else is gonna be around him. This is why I say, carry your trauma medical kit on your person. I wear an ankle medical kit. We get it from Mountain Man Medical. I recommend them highly. Everything that we would make from that goes to good charities. So link's in the description in order to grab one of those if you would like. Also here, okay, the family's around. What are you gonna do? You better start doing some medical. Thank God there was a neighbor that actually had a trauma med kit here and was able to bring it to bear, but man, did that take a while. So you wanna have yours on your person so that somebody doesn't have to bring it from across the street, right? Thankfully worked in this case, he was able to do that. Remember, this one's all about when do I draw my gun and paying attention in your world. And just because you have a gun on your person doesn't mean you're safe. You still gotta make good decisions in the tactics world and you gotta pay attention to cover your ASP.